at and looking after the talent. But this whole notion of developing the aesthetic of the artists, I thought we'd start off by one of the very, very exciting artists that you're working with now. Here's a young man who started out life in musical theater. Correct. He hears about an audition for American Idol. He was on stage uh, at the Pantages Theater in Los Angeles, in, in, in Hollywood, LA. in Hollywood, right. uh, in Wicked. He was in the chorus. Wicked. In the Wicked. Right, the musical. The musical, and I think it was the eighth, eighth um, se uh, season of American Idol, uh, and they were in Los Angeles for rehearse or for inter um, auditions. Right. And someone said you should go audition. He, he dropped everything one afternoon, went and auditioned, and. That's where it all started. So he basically wins American Idol. He's no, he did not win, actually. He was runner-up. So he was runner-up, but he's, when he was in those finals, uh, he would be appearing before 20, 30 million people? Yeah, 30, I think 33, 35 was the maximum, the top. And a fantastic voice, Adam Lambert mm -hmm. is his name. Incredible, incredible voice. So he's the runner-up. Yes. And how did you get to meet him and to decide you were going to manage him and see a long-term future for him? Well, at the time, American Idol contestants had to sign a contract or an agreement whereby they would be managed by a group of people that were tied to the production company for the, for the program. Um, had, if they went on to have a recording career, they would be signed to RCA Records. Um, and he had to do that like everyone else. And uh, that ran its course. He had one album out with a hit called um, What Do You Want From Me? And it was quite successful. He got a lot of attention uh, from, there, there was a lot of speculation that he would be the winner that year. Uh, and uh, there was a, you know, somewhat of a surprise when he didn't win. Um, a, a young man called Chris Allen won that year. Um, but Adam, anyway, went on to have a, a fairly you know, a thriving career uh, and with that hit single, and then that sort of ran its course. Um, I think that uh, Simon Fuller then sold 19, the, the production. So Simon Fuller was the guy who created the concept of American and pop idol? He created it with Simon Cowell, correctly, correct. Right. And he sold to a company out of New York, and that gave Adam an out to go seek other management. Which is how, and you, then that's how I got involved. We got involved, yes. So, what was it about his voice that made you and Martin and uh, think? Well, of we, to be candid, we're not super keen on uh, these con these talent contests because it's really not about the the music. It's about television, right? It's about the show, right? And you know, television is an incredible revenue. Uh, um, earner and uh, American Idol was incredibly successful, as is The Voice currently in, in, the, in the States. Um, but the artists, you know, there are very few artists that go on to have a thriving career. But this kid, and I call him a kid because, you know, he's still a kid, he's 33 years old, he's a great, great guy. He had, you know, um, such incredible talent that it was undeniable. And when he became available, um, we thought we would uh, take the uh, opportunity to have a, have a chat with him, and he chose us as, as his managers. And then you did something really interesting, because you saw this longer range ability, but also recognized, as you've done for many years in your own career, of looking at international and the international markets to develop someone's career and their career impact. And you arranged for him to join well, and play with Queen? Yes and no. Um, he actually, on the finale of American Idol, uh, which I believe was 2010, 2008 or 2010, I can't remember. Anyway, um, Queen, which was Brian May and Roger Taylor, uh, performed on the show with Adam and Chris Allen, the, the, the uh -huh. kid who eventually won. Um, and that sort of started somewhat of a relationship. You know, it was obvious that, 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 that Adam with his voice was, was a, a natural for that, that fit with them. Um, but when we got involved with him, first of all, we, we view management of artists from a global, global perspective all the time. Uh, from, from the very beginning to, to the end, it's, uh, this is a small world and, um, you know, if, if, if an artist doesn't have global potential, then we're not really interested. First of all, they have to be incredibly, ta incredibly talented. 
and we have to ambitious. And, well, yes, but most more than, before that, um, uh, have music, and, you know, their songwriting that we like. We have to like it. If you're not going to like, you know, this is not a job; it's a li lifestyle. Right. Right. It's a love. So if you, you, you yeah, you either love it, you love it and hate it at the same time. Exactly. Because it, because it's a 24/7 job, 24/7 lifestyle. Um, but anyway, he, uh, he 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 had that experience with Queen uh, on American Idol, and then when we got involved with him, I had heard that uh, Queen were going to be honored with an award at the MTV European Music Awards in, in Belfast, was probably 2011 or so, and and that they had chosen Lady Gaga as their singer, um, but then that fell apart for. Whatever reason, I don't know. And Adam, so I made a phone call to Jim Beach, who is Queen's manager, his lo their long time, long, long, long time manager, and said, you know, you're going to, Queen's going to be honored in Belfast at the EMAs. You know, we manage Adam. I think it would be a great fit. Let's give it a try. And they were up for it, and they did, and that's, and, and, and that's what started that. So he, Adam has a multifaceted career. He has, you know, some of you might know or probably do know that, that Adam has uh, toured with Queen as the lead singer for the past year and traveling all over the world in tra different countries. We, we've toured everywhere in the world except for South America, which we're doing in September. Uh, but at the same time, so that's you know, very important and, it's, and, and it has given him incredible profile and he's an amazing singer, an amazing personality and uh, people got to know him outside of America in a, in a much bigger way. And, um, and um, at the same time, he was, while he was on the road, uh, during the tour, during off times, he, would, he was recording a solo record. Well, we got him off of RCA Records and we signed him to So work. he was with RCA yeah. for a record that did pretty well. Pretty well, and the second record did not do well. Okay, and so after that, you decided, time for a change, you go to Warner Brothers Records. Correct. Working with Cameron Strang, who's Correct. their new president, very Correct. creative guy, also runs Warner Chapel Music. Yes, Cameron was key, but also Max Martin, the producer, the Swedish producer, singer-songwriter producer. So is Max Martin is the guy who Not wrote... Not singer-songwriter. Songwriter. Songwriter, yeah. who wrote a lot of the hits for Backstreet Boys, Britney Spears. Yeah, he's done, and he actually um, was involved with uh, What Do You Want From Me, the first... Adam Lambert single off the first album, uh -huh. and also a collaborator with Katy Perry. So we have a long-term relationship. With oh, I see. So he collaborated with Katy even before the Adam relationship from the first album, because there was a writing partnership between the two, Katy and Adam. co-writing and producing. Incredible. Yep. So you go to a new record label, a new start. Mm -hmm. Uh, here he's on the set of Glee, the very successful. Yeah, he has a multifaceted career, like I said, and part of it is that. You know, he, there, there's a lot of interest in him for television, and there's a lot of interest in, in him for musical theater. We've had several offers for Broadway oh. plays and, oh. and uh, musicals, um, but it's now time to focus on a solo career. We have a new album coming out in June, a new single out um, in about three weeks ago. So Adam Lambert teams up with Max Martin, goes to Scandinavia, and writes, Max and his records, team. Max has a brings out a whole new facet of his creative mm -hmm. expression, mm -hmm. I guess you can call it. And the net result of the new recording coming out and the single coming out, what's your verdict? What's my verdict? I love the album, but you know, I'm biased, of course, but I really do genuinely love the album. Right. Um, and Adam is you know, not only talented, but a very hard worker, he's determined, he's ambitious, he's focused. Right. And, um, you know, we're off to a great start. A radio in America, a radio in uh, Canada, radio in Australia, but it's very early days. A queen wouldn't hire someone to be the singer, basically doing the Freddie Mercury songs, unless the guy was really good. Yeah, they, they wouldn't. And, 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 you know, we took a chance. We all took a chance, you know, Roger and Brian and Jim Beach and I and Adam and Martin and Bradford, uh, we took a, a you know, leap of faith. We, we felt that it was uh, something we were, we were confident. Um, we sold the, the North American tour to Live Nation, um, who took a chance, um, and it just proved to be successful. Fantastic. Yeah. So Adam Lambert, big uh, priority for direct management. Absolutely. Interesting uh, opportunity. Now here's an interesting show.